Emily and I are becoming grandparents, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to the What Could Go Right podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Orton. And I'm Emily Orton. And here we talk about personal growth and sailing. In 2014, we moved aboard a fixer-upper sailboat and bootstrapped a year sailing with our five kids, and it changed our lives forever. We tell the whole story in our memoir, our book, Seven at Sea. On this podcast, we want to help you go from fear to freedom, one adventure at a time. All right. So oftentimes when we get on these episodes, we have a few ideas in mind, and I guess I do, but I don't have anything jotted down. But we are about to become grandparents, and I just kind of want to ramble about it a little bit and just sort of think some, think, think some thoughts out loud and talk about it. So in honor of becoming grandparents, we put on these outfits because, you know, this seems like the most grandfatherly sweater I own. And yeah. Emily is wearing a blazer. Yeah, I feel like this is grandmotherly, this soft blazer. It's not a fashion episode, but just to say. it's This episode's actually about our outfits. So <laughs> if you're listening to this, get over to YouTube right away so you can see what we're wearing. We'll have a link to the, our outfits in the no, show notes. None of that is true. Affiliate links. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is like a, I got the sweater, at the Old Navy or something, or I don't know. Anyway, Anyways. we are going to become grandparents. Do we look like grandparents? What does it take to be a grandparent? What is it like? How do you feel when you become a grandparent? I, you had some some thoughts. All right. I'll just say this. Um, I was, I'm on the phone often with people that want to go sailing. And I was talking with a lady who's a grandmother. And she was telling me that she's going to attend her grandson's track meet or something like that. He was running some kind of race. And I just thought, oh, wow, I haven't even thought about that part of being like of grandkids because our daughter and our son-in-law are having a baby in October and we will become parent grandparents to a grandbaby. Mm. And this, this kid's going to be a baby for a while. And I'm, so I'm thinking about like baby grandkids, Yeah. but you know what happens with babies mm. is ve very often more and more these days they grow up into kids at teenagers and adults and then you have older grandkids and for me that was a little bit of a i mean it's obvious right but it just hadn't occurred to me yet that i'm gonna be the grandfather to grandkids of of various ages all the way up to adulthood, hopefully. At least that's the plan. That, yeah, that's the dream. That's what our parents are doing. That's what our parents are doing. Yeah. And now our, our parents are going to become great grandparents, which for those of you out there that have hit these milestones before, I'm sure you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the club. But we're just kind of excited to be here. We're like, you know, welcome back, freshmen. We're the we're, – sorry, that's an inside joke. <laughs> They put up a sign on our on our daughter's high school that said, "Welcome back, freshman." And guess who's never been there before? The freshman. freshman. How can so you? we're like the freshman grandparents. We've never been here before, and we're like walking the halls and checking out our locker and thinking, like, "How does this work?" And this is cool. And what's on our schedule? And yeah, what's it going to be like? And what, how how involved or uninvolved should we be? Like, how do we navigate it with? You know, they're the parents. They they are the ones who get to decide what kind of access and influence we might have with their child. And, you know, that's just a whole new layer of things. And um, I feel like we started it out right by establishing really good relationships with our kids, building relationships of trust. And we've talked about this on other episodes, how to get your kids to take your advice. Um, <laughs> why why your kids don't come first, all that sort of stuff. Um, how to build credibility, how to get your kids to stop rolling their eyes at you. Uh, this is one of the areas where I feel like I don't, I don't know that we were just super smart on our own going into this, but we knew that we wanted to build trust. We wanted to get their opinions. We wanted to be transparent about the decisions we were making as we went along and um, what it has. And we wanted to show them that we could do our own dreams. We did this sailing trip together as a family. We wanted to prioritize those kind of experiences. All that just to say that um, we got lucky because those things worked and we're in touch with all of our kids 
and they like to talk to us and like to be with us and they want to include us in their lives. And so I guess that was step one for being good grandparents or getting the opportunity to experience that is that we started out by building good relationships with the parents. <laughs> so, and I'll say this, this is my favorite quote about grandparenting. If raising your kids is an investment, your grandchildren are a return on that investment. Mm. And everyone that I talk to says being a grandparent is the best. I'm just going to say, I believe you. I believe you. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how it's going to feel when it actually happens. Cause it's, I'll just say right now we're about a month away when this podcast airs, it'll probably be a lot closer or may have already happened. So this is the before picture. This is what we look like before we act like, like right before we became grandparents. So let us know in the comments below, like you have experience, like what's been the best, what, what are the pitfalls we should anticipate? How, you know, what is working? What is awesome? Coach us up on how to be awesome grandparents. You can yeah. email us. If, because if you're listening to this podcast, you can't really comment, but um, you email us at mm. hello at the awesome factory NYC subject. Awesome grandparents. There you go. I started your email for you. Yeah, there you, you can do that. You can come comment on our Facebook page or on Instagram or in the comments on the YouTube video. So lots of places. We'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Um, I, That's even better because then everybody can get the benefit of their advice. Not yeah. just a, Don't just send it to us privately post it where you can bless the world. Yeah. And we just did, uh, it wasn't really a baby shower. We did something called a blessing way. And it's kind of a mix of ideas from different cultures, mostly uh, native American, but our daughter didn't want to, um, play games and get presents at her as a, as a way to prepare for entering motherhood. And so what she wanted to do is gather people she respects and admires who are mothers, people that she looks up to, and then also other women that she's really close to and, and are encouraging and nourishing and that um, are going to support her as she crosses this threshold. And so we just, we gathered and we started with just mingling. And then we had maybe like a 15 to 20 minute yoga practice that a friend of ours led. And it was all guided towards just taking some deep breaths and stretching a little bit and um, coming away, feeling really grateful for the bodies that we have. And also feeling really present in the moment, like letting go of all our thoughts about other outside responsibilities and things happening on that, you know, weekend Saturdays are always super busy. And then we had, you know, we had some food. I'm just sharing this ideas in case it's something that you might want to do. If, if you're not a huge fan of baby showers, this is an alternative. And we had some delicious food and like kind of a brunch. And then we each offered her a bead that represented a trait that she, we know she already possesses that we believe each of us believe would um, help her become a great parent. It didn't have to be anything too formal. It could be a bead you had around your house. You're like, oh yeah, this is, this yellow bead reminds me of her because she's just so positive or, or you could go deep and research and get something very specific, but then she's just going to keep it on a little, um, chain. It's not meant to be aesthetic. It's meant to be symbolic and encouraging and full of the love of these women. And, and then she said, for the most part, she just had a lot of questions. She had like big picture questions, meta questions, philosophical questions. And then she had little nitty gritty questions like, what is the healing like in those first 30 days? And, and we all just lingered and shared. And then um, one of her friends was just doing henna tattoos and it, it's just fun. It's pretty, it's temporary. It was something we could all share a kind of mark that, Hey, we were all here together. And as they left, I gave each woman a fall scented candle and said, when, she has the baby. They're going to let me know. And I'll text out to you guys, to all of you ladies, and you can light your candle and just be thinking of her, praying for her. And just, she'll know that you're aware of her as she's doing this focused work that only she can really do, but to, wants to have that encouragement. So it was just such a beautiful, nourishing, peaceful day. And afterwards she said, 
I'm so glad we did it this way. I'm so glad we didn't ask for presents and it didn't get, um, you know, covered over with those logistics and, uh, you know, presents are good and people need things. And games when the, are fun, but this yeah. is, a, this is just a different way. It's an alternative. Yeah. Way. You need things when you're starting out, but this, this is what she really wanted to address her emotional needs as she enters into motherhood. And it was beautiful. We all had a wonderful time. So. And it was, it was her grandmother. Yep. And a lot of the women who were part of raising her in mm -hmm. New York city, part of the village that we were that yeah, we kind of the live, we didn't live in the village, but you know the, the community that we lived in in New York. We call this group of women the matriarchs. We say she wants to gather the matriarchs, and she also wanted to do this before she got married. Like this is where she wants to touch base before the big steps. So, yeah, and I think the only non mom mothers there were she had a friend, and then our our daughter Lily was there. Yeah, and and her sister Sarah Jane. That's yeah. right. Her sisters and yeah. Anyway, but it, it, I love the idea of gathering the matriarchs and the future matriarchs and, and kind of gathering the wisdom and the power and the love that has come from experience and passing it on to a new mom right when she needs it most. And in a way that is, um, she's ready for it. Like it's a, it's sort of a, a prepared situation saying, I'm coming with questions. I'm seeking knowledge and there's going to be an opportunity for you to share as opposed to just saying, Hey, can you shoot me an idea with your top 10 tips on being a mom or, you know, cause those are good too, but just to have something that's so intentional, so thoughtful, and I think beautiful. And I was not there cause I am not a mother or a woman. And, and I'm glad, I'm glad that the women in my life had an opportunity to gather up and share love and power together. And it was, it was, it was great to be sort of witness it from afar. And we'd love to hear what are your ideas of, of what works, what helps, what, what's been the best way for you as the parent to help your adult kids transition into parenthood. I would love to hear ideas for how we can support our son-in-law or our son when the time comes for him, because it's a huge transition for dads also. Yeah. And you, I know you didn't do anything. <laughs> I, I, I can't think of a single thing that we did that, that I did as a man to prepare for kind of like, like, I guess to like gather up support from other men, I would say. Like to acknowledge the transition. Like this is a big deal. Yeah. This is your role forever now. And maybe we should come up with something. For, yeah. But. I heard one good idea. We talked to our friends. If you want to listen to their podcast, I think it's called Neighboring Well. And I don't think they've talked about it there, but um, they t told us that there was a, a guy in their community who had recently become a father. And so several of the dads got together and took him out for burgers and just kind of said, hey, welcome to fatherhood. And just kind of shared some of their experiences together. I thought that was so cool. And I should say we're actually okay. You did this thing for Allison, and we're talking about ideas of what you could what could be done for men who are about to become fathers. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do for us as grandparents? Like, we is there is there like a blessing way for grandparents where we like, hey, you know, we're we're hitting this milestone in life, and we got to brace ourselves. <laughs> yeah, Should let us go? know. I've seen I've seen one person say, "Hey, I'm having like a." a grandma shower or something like I'm going to become a grandma. So let me gather my friends and talk about it. Um, I don't, I don't know. What do you think would be helpful? I have one idea and I'm going to see if you can beat it. My one idea is we should go to Chakarama. I don't understand the... that. That's, it does not sound like a grandparent type thing to do. Like you just like an initiation. I don't even know if there is still a Chakarama. Oh, there's a Chakarama. Okay. Anyway, like if you can come up with a better idea than us going out to Chakarama to sort of mark the occasion, we want to hear about it. I thought it was going to be go sailing because it's usually. <laughs> we could sail to a Chakarama. <laughs> now, um, now we're just getting goofy. I think it's going to, I don't know. I am, I'm looking forward to meeting this little person and I guess I'm just expecting it's going to hit like a big wave and we'll be guided by our desires to be around and be a positive resource and um, encouragement and also will be guided by what the parents are. 
interested in having from us. So I don't know. I'd love to hear what you think about this whole grandparenting thing. What could go right? What could go right? Hey guys, it's Eric. Now that we have rounded the corner into fall, I do want to tell you about some exciting new trips coming up. The long-awaited announcements for our summer Mediterranean trips. I'm going to share those with you. So let me start at the top. At the moment of this recording, I'll start with the top of the year. January 27th through February 1st, currently have one spot. It's a female spot in a shared cabin, bunk bed cabin for the Virgin Islands, January 27th through February 1st. The next trip that we have is March 10th through the 15th, 2025, also to the Virgin Islands. Then we're going to be in the Bahamas, March 31st through April 5th. After that, we're going to jump ahead to the summertime and we're going to be in Italy, June 7th through the 14th. We'll be in Greece, July 19th through the 26th, and we'll be in Croatia, August 2nd through the 9th. So I'm just going to repeat those real quick. January 27th through the 1st, I've got one spot for a lady in on our Virgin Islands trip. Then we're going to be back in the Virgin Islands in March, March 10th through the 15th. Again, then we'll be in the Bahamas, March 31st through April 5th. Then we're going to be in Italy in June 7th through the 14th. Greece, July 19th through the 26th. And Croatia, August 2 through 9. And as we... Uh, it's, those are those are a little ways off, but not too far. Currently, they are at early bird pricing. The prices will go up as we get closer, but if you want to snag a spot early and get a, a better price, drop me a line, shoot me an email, hello at theaustinfactory.nyc, DM me on social, and we're going to do early bird pricing through Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, the prices will start to go up. So anyway, that's the lineup. We're super excited to visit one of our favorite spots, the Virgin Islands and the Bahamas, and then also get over to Italy Greece and Croatia. Hope to have you aboard. I'm also going to share with you some takeaways from people that have been sailing with us. Here's another one. You're good. Go ahead. You know, Dave. this uh, to me is was something that was on my bucket list. We uh, we spent a lot of time living in kind of tropical places and went on live aboard dive boats. But I always wanted the chance to be on a, a yacht to just to be a little more le leisurely pace. And that's one thing I've loved is. A dive board, you're up to do a dive at nine, and lunch is right at 12, and you're back in dive board at one, and everything is so scheduled. And this was so relaxed, and we could do whatever we felt like doing. And, and I, I needed that. It was, or July had been a crazy month for us, and just needed the chance to relax and recharge. Um, I've also enjoyed getting a chance to uh, build friendships here. I know many of you have friendships that go back decades. And, and for a lot of you, our friendship is much more recent, uh, but it's been lovely, just a, a great group of people. Um, it's nice to remember when I dropped my, when Lori dropped my hearing aids into the ocean with a, a large current and <laughs> Brent jumped in and found them actually, which I thought was an impossible thing to do. So, and there's just been so many fun things. I guess one surprise is I, I expected a jacuzzi in our room. And, <laughs> And there wasn't one, but we did go to Brenda's bubble bath or bubble pool. Rachel's bubble bubbly, bubbly Rachel, pool. Rachel's bubble pool. Yeah. And that, that made up for it. That was really <laughs> nice. So. I'll work on the jacuzzi for next time. <laughs> okay. okay. So this, uh, this has just been an amazing experience. You know, I, I think sometimes you take out a globe and say, where am I today? And you pop down a pin right in the middle of the ocean down here, you know, and it's like... It's kind of hard to believe that we really are here, but uh, I think we may have been the first one to sign up because I was excited to do this. And it, it was a lot of fun, it was a lot of fun. But it was, it's been a marvelous experience and we're, we're glad we could do it. I think for me, the uh, words might be enriching or, or renewing. Uh, I just needed a chance to reset my, my life a little bit and get ready to go back to real life, you know, today. Um, and friendship. It's been fun for me to hang with adults and be able to get to know some wonderful people. And everybody is so compatible, so much fun. It was it was a tremendous experience for us. 